get your hands up. Wanna know who the best? Yes, we the answer. Number one ranking, top of the food team. Better fall back, boy, we hiding in the blue flame. It's your boy, O, flow straight psycho. You don't want the problems, beat it like Michael. If you ain't rapping D line, you rapping the rivals. D O A, get dead on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the D line show. I'm your host, Black Ice. It's your boy, Bonnie Snatcher. And we are the D line. We are joined today by a man who doesn't need any introduction. The one, the only, Mike Mark. Boom! Thank you, boys. Hey. You know, my body snatcher. That's the. Uh, we'll be able to forget that one. <laughs> How are you guys doing? How are we doing good, man? Thanks for coming on the show, man. Thanks for having me. Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself. How'd you get started in the business? Yeah, man, I was uh, been in the wrestling business for 12 years now. Trained by uh, John Curse and Mike Mayhem, uh, then Critical Mass Pro Wrestling, now NYWC. That's where it started, and from there it's transitioned down to Louisville, Kentucky, OVW, WWE, from WWE to Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor, and here we are, Newark, Delaware, ECWA. Now, you're all over the place. All over, man. Place. Full time job being Mike Bondo. <laughs> That's hey, right, you know? You know, you know. That's what I'm saying. So, what were your inspirations in getting into this business? Uh, you know, it's something I've always wanted to do since I was a little kid. You know, I want to say since four years old, but how many of us really remember what we were for? But yeah. I remember little flashbacks here and there, and you know, just from there it just transcended. I mean, I was a Hulkamaniac, you know, growing up. Oh, for, yeah, exactly, you know. What you gonna do, brother? Uh, Brett the Hitman Hart, my idol, the reason why I wanted to get in the wrestling business. And, uh, you know, it was just always something I knew I wanted to do, I just didn't know when. And uh, fate took its course, and uh, just happened when it was supposed to happen. You know? Right, absolutely. That's it. Tell us a little bit about your experience uh, being in the WWE. You know, first of all, tell us about going to OVW and working your way uh, to the big show and things like that, being around guys like Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Sure, well, it was a long, long road, you know. I uh, started in OVW back in 2003, uh, relocated uh, on my own dime with nothing for, wow. to Louisville, Kentucky, yeah. Wow. And uh, just like from there, it was like a pecking order, you know, like anything, just work your way up and finally, uh, through hard work and, you know, working the jobs and all that, trying to support myself, finally yep. made things happen at 21 years old, got a WWE developmental contract, uh, and there, you know, from there it just, just took off. Everything in wrestling's happened so quick. Uh, being trained by Landstorm, Al Snow, Bill DeMont, Dr. Tom Pritchard, Jim Cornette, Paul Heyman. Uh, the list goes on and on about guys that have, you know, given me the tools to succeed in this business. And uh, that took me to WWE and just uh, work with Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Ric Flair. Yeah, yeah. Guys that just wealth of knowledge and experience. And uh, to work with those guys really just kind of took my game to the next level, you know. Yeah. And, just, uh, and that's the one thing that's different between me and, and to say everybody uh, in this locker room say, uh, per se is just experience, you know, just yeah. working with those guys, the guys that have been there, done that, and to be a sponge, take that knowledge and, and give it back to everybody else, you know, and that's what the business is all about. Absolutely. But, now, you, but you, I'm sorry, but you getting that contract at 21, yeah. mm -hmm. now that's being pretty young, breaking into business, being in the big leagues, how, mm -hmm. how did you deal with that? Being on the road and, you know, just being out there, something big and new it's like it's like everything when you first do something you got to get your feet wet you got to get it in there you know uh, of course a lot of things were confusing i was really young at the time right. um you know but it's just like anything you just experiences and you live and learn and that's how pretty much what i did from the rental cars to the hotels to you know everything <laughs> all night yeah, man. you know man's yeah. world the boy was in a man's world yeah, you right, know man. so living the dream living, living the dream, dream ltd you know? okay. yes. there you go. Yeah. now when we first met you mike we were uh uh making our debut in roh mm -hmm. and we really we got to tell you face to face man to man that we really appreciate you because you know you, you're always arms open always willing to help always you know just just there if you need it i mean we really appreciate that uh from the bottom of our hearts now Coming back from that injury mm -hmm. and going through that process, tell us a little bit about that. Like, that was a, thank you for the uh, compliments. I appreciate that. But uh, sure. that injury, that, I remember that like, people ask me what's the toughest match in my career, and, and that's the first match that comes to my mind. Reason being the circumstances that was going on that match. A lot of people think I broke my uh, ankle in, in Toronto when I you know, the stage and I did, did that big 30 -50 dive onto yeah. Mike Bennett, right. but my leg was actually broke uh, it was like two or three minutes into the match, ironically oh, wow. from running. Um, that's when I heard the pop and then gradually it just got you know a little bit worse, a little bit worse as right. time went on and you know there's a difference between being hurt and injured. Well at that yeah. point I knew that I was injured, not hurt anymore. Hurt, you can still keep going. Mm -hmm. But you know it was just about just sucking it up, you know, giving the people, uh, whether it was one person that paid a ticket to see me or a whole arena full, I 
was going to make sure that they get their money's worth and uh, deliver, because that's, that's my job. And that's exactly what I did. So, you know, 12 minutes felt like 32 minutes, but then after that, it was right to the emergency room. Uh, didn't get out of there at 2 in the morning, and then to Toronto. I had to drive back to New York. It took me two days to get home. It was just a long, long drive. Right, absolutely. So, yeah. We're glad you're 100% glad yeah. you're back. And thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule oh, man, thank to be you. on our show, man. We really appreciate uh, that. All absolutely, right. man. Thank you very much. Actually, one last question. Yeah, I got an answer. This, this is for the guys who are trying to break into business. Mm -hmm. What do you have, you know, informational wise to give them to where they think they can come in and make it? Do you have any information or any good advice that you can give these young guys Excellent trying to break into business? Yeah, absolutely. And, there's a lot of uh, wrestling schools uh, around these days, you know, around the United States, all over the world for that matter. Some are really, really good, and some are not so good. You heard the stories, right? Of course. Try to invest in a place where the person in charge of the school has a reputation or has done something um, that's contributed in a positive way in the wrestling business. For example, so at the top is uh, OVW, right? Uh, WWE developmental territory, now TNA, but so many guys have come from there. It's got a proven track record. Right. You know if you invest in that school, you're going to get the investment back. Right. Um, keep a good attitude, work hard, have a passion for this. Uh, people that have a passion, it just makes it so much more of a difference and, and just the performance yeah. in itself. But everyone has their own reasons uh, for getting into it, you know, uh, whatever. But if you, have a pa you have to have a passion for this. You really, really, truly want to succeed. I really firmly believe um, and just, uh, I have this quote that I always live by, there's those that say they do, there's those that say they will, and those that will do whatever it takes. Mm. Be that person that will do whatever it takes, because in this business it's about timing, right place, right time, and then once all those nice things fall into place, let your work speak for itself, and then, uh, by then hopefully you'll be over-prepared because you'll be doing whatever it takes. Right. Absolutely. So, so. Now before we close the show. Can you tell our viewers where to follow you, Facebook, Twitter? Sure. You can uh, friend me if you haven't friended me on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash Mike Mondo. Really easy. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at Mike Mondo 83. And, uh, yeah, love to uh, keep in touch with my fans. Always. Oh, yeah. You ready first from the one and only Mike, Mike Mondo. Mondo. Watch out for the landmine when it goes tick tick No need for the office if you don't have defense Body set to black ice, shake your body like dice Yes, you best think twice if you value your